Hi there everybody, it is great to be back amongst you here at Memorial. You are joining us for our digital worship service this morning. If you're joining us on Facebook, then I want to point a couple of things out to you. First of all is our comments section. We want to invite you to say hello to one another in there. Greet one another in the name of the Lord. Share the peace with one another when that time comes. We also want to invite you to share any prayer requests you have there and one of our online pastors will pray with you in real time when you do that. This is a, a real way that we can form community by participating in this digital service. The other thing on your Facebook screen is that share button. Please go ahead, find that and click it and you'll be sharing this service with all of your Facebook friends. And as I always say, who knows which one of them will join in at just the right moment and hear just the right word. We also want to know that you are here. So please go along to our website, mumconline.com forward slash here. You're going to find a link in that, on that page that will take you to a Google form and you can fill out. That's our a digital attendance pad. We love to know that you have worshipped with us. So please go ahead and do that. You know, one of the most amazing ministries of the Florida Conference of the United Methodist Church is the United Methodist Children's Home in Enterprise, Florida. Lives are changed in the, uh, uh, in the children that come along there. Sometimes those children even come back and spend some of their working lives at the children's home. Such is the impact. This is a fifth Sunday. We always have a collection for the children's home on that fifth Sunday. And we always show you a video highlighting their work. This is that video. I came to the children's home in 2007 after my mother had died. Um, our church stepped in and placed my brother and myself here. Who knew that when Ashley would grow up, that she would end up being a part of our independent living program and working right alongside of me. She had just came to us on the hills of losing her mom. My heart was just so torn up over the grief and what this child was going through. My therapist's name was Kathy. She very quickly became one of my favorite people on campus. Um, she inspired a lot of what I do now. I really liked participating in rec. I really liked that they had tutoring because academically um, it helped a lot. So with chapel we uh, got to go around various parts of Florida. We would perform um, at different Methodist churches in the area. Um, that was nice because we got to meet a lot of nice people. The Children's Home actually shaped um, who I am now as a person. Um, the position is working with the alumni and then the other set of people that I work with are youth who are still on campus and I really like working with them as well because they they I think they don't always see the potential that they have but then I get to come in and say you know I did live here I do know that what I'm teaching you is valuable and you need to know it so I hope that maybe even if it's just like one kid maybe they make different choices than they would have if I wasn't in the picture. Thank you for all that you do and helps give kids like I used to be a chance to succeed. Thank you, Pastor Charlie. And one of the things that we always do as well is every Sunday, we remember that Jesus is the light of the world. And in order to remember that, we always light a candle, welcoming Christ's presence with us while we worship. So come, light of Christ, be with us this day as we worship you. And also, we always offer the peace, the peace of Christ, because we are to be God's peacemakers. So I say to you, may the peace of Christ be with you this day, and please share the peace of Christ with others in the feed. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and His glory.
Join me in our affirmation of faith as we declare our beliefs together. The words will come on the screen. We believe in the one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the word of God contained in the Old and New Testaments as a sufficient rule both of faith and of practice. We believe in the church, those who are united in the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as a divine will realized in human society and in the family of God where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in the life everlasting. Amen. Hey everybody, I hope everybody's doing great today and I'm very excited because August the 7th for all four services, we're gonna be blessing our backpacks. Please bring your backpack to service. We're gonna pray over our backpacks as we get ready to go back to school. And also don't forget to pick up your backpack tag so that you know that your church is praying for you. Speaking of prayer, as we get ready for school, sometimes some of us might be worried or scared or frightened or nervous about our new teachers, our new friends, new places, and new classrooms. I just want to remind you that God is there for you. He wants you to pray to Him, to bring all your worries, all your concerns, everything you're nervous about, bring it to Him and He will put peace in your heart. Don't forget when you pray, it's a quiet time for just you and God to be together. Will you pray with me now? Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for always being there for us. And thank you for listening to our worries, our concerns, and our prayers. In your son's name we pray, amen. And now we're gonna find out how we can live at our calling memorial with just three things. One of the ways our church supports our community is by also supporting those special people who support our community. And one of the big ways we do that each year is with our free teacher supply fair. And it's coming up next Sunday. And if you forgot your items this week, don't worry. There's still a little bit of time to bring them in. You can bring them in this week to the Parton Center or purchase some from your favorite online store and have them shipped to Justin at the church. We'd love to have them all here by Wednesday, August 3rd, but we'll take your school supply donations until next Sunday before the fair, too. Remember, we can use copy paper, notebook paper, band-aids, folders, pencils, pens, colored pencils, and more. A full list of the items needed can be found at mumconline.com slash news. And teachers of our church family, this is for you too. So come on by, bring a coworker or two. Tell them to come by Memorial Sunday, August 7th from 1230 to 330 to shop for free and pick up extra school supplies for their classrooms. Yes, we are a church that supports our community, and we are also a church that supports our own church family. And Pastor Alice is going to tell you a little bit about that through congregational care. Hi, Memorial. Pastor Alice here, and I'm just wondering if there's anybody out there who's going through a rough patch right now. You know, that happens to all of us from time to time. We go through seasons or just times of trouble. And sometimes those times of trouble, we just need a listening ear. Well, Memorial has very highly trained listening ears. They're called Stephen Ministers, and they are especially trained to help people walk through tough patches, seasons in their lives when you're struggling with something. You'll see our Stephen ministers every Sunday outside the worship space offering prayer. So if you're interested in that, just let me know and we'll get you connected. 
If you're going through a little rougher time where you're just all tangled up in emotional knots and you can't figure out how to get yourself untangled, well, that's where pastoral counseling comes in. And that's one of the roles I have here at Memorial is to help you unwind those thorny and tough knots that have just gotten so tight you can't figure out how to untie them. Either way, here I am, call, Memorial he is here not just to take care of those outside our walls, but also our family. You can find out more about congregational care by visiting mumconline.com slash care or by calling the church office. And now I have another date that I need you to write down and remember. Sunday, August 21st is the date of our next good old fashioned church potluck luncheon, which will be at 1230 in Maxwell Hall. Now all potlucks are a special time to get together and have fellowship with the church family, but this one is even more special and important because it's going to be a time for the church staff to say thank you to all of those servant volunteers who help us throughout the church. We want to thank all of you, our special unsung heroes, who help us each and every day memorial through your spiritual gifts. So bring a dish to share or just bring yourself and make plans to come to the good old fashioned church potluck August 21st and let's celebrate our unsung heroes here at Memorial. Supporting our community through the teacher's fair, supporting each other through congregational care, and having fellowship and thanking those who serve in our church. These are just some of the ways that you can live your calling this week through Memorial. Just a couple of weeks ago, our youth group reignited their physical presence relationship with branches in South Florida, a church that we have been partnering with for 15 or 16 years now here at Memorial. It was great for them to go. And we have a video with just a few of their highlights.
Wasn't that amazing that our youth group could go all that way to South Florida and do all of that good? You know, they are only able to do that because of your generosity and your ongoing support of our youth ministry programs. And today, I want to say a huge thank you for that. I want to say a thank you, of course, to Justin, our youth director, who does such amazing work with these young people. But I also want to thank you because it is your gifts and it is your support, which means that our youth ministry program is thriving the way it is. And that relationship with, uh, with our partners at Branches is continuing the way it is. So as we bring our tithes and offerings today, let's do it with thanksgiving that we get to join in with what God is doing here among our own young people and among the young people and the community around branches in South Florida. Let's bring our gifts and our offerings with great joy and great generosity. Let's pray together. And gracious God, we give thanks for partnerships developed over many years. We give thanks for young people willing to give of their time to go and serve at branches. We give thanks for what you are doing here through our youth ministry. And we give thanks for the opportunity to partner with it, to join in by bringing our gifts. So Lord, as we bring them today, would you receive these offerings? Would you bless them and would you put them to work here in our own church, through our partners and branches and in so many other places where your work continues? as we seek to join in with you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Let us um, turn loose of all of the cares of last week and all the concerns we might have for the coming week and just be still before the Lord. Let us pray. Holy and wondrous Savior, we come before you today acknowledging you as the one to whom we can pray, knowing you alone hear us. Jesus, you have shown us how we ought to pray and what we ought to pray. Throughout your ministry, you prayed with your disciples and you prayed alone. Your example gives us the assurance that you listen to us when we come together as one body and when we come to you in the silence of our hearts and in quiet places. So Holy Spirit, hear our prayers and speak to us today. Enable us to hear you through your written words spoken and through listening to your messenger who will proclaim your word to us. We ask now that you would comfort those among us who are sick and suffering in any way. We ask now for your sustaining grace and guidance for every decision that we might be struggling with and ask that your will would be done. God, give us wisdom, discernment, and strength to follow you, Jesus, when the temptations of this world would have us depart from your ways. Keep all those we love safe and healthy. We ask too that you would place your healing hand on the hands of those who are caring for our loved ones, that every medical act would be effective in relieving pain and bringing about healing as is in your will. Indeed, help us to accept your will when the pray prayers we pray are not answered as we would want. Strengthen our faith when doubts and fears creep into our hearts and minds and spirits show us where and when we should be to help those grieving or struggling with the cares of daily living. Embolden us to share our faith as you give us opportunities. Thank you, thank you for being our loving creator, our provider, our sustainer, our savior and our friend. Help us to respond to you with acts of gratitude and not merely with words. We pray these things in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Today's verse is from Psalm 78, verses 1 through 7. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known, that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's so good to be back among you and preaching with you here at Memorial. You know, when I was putting in place plans for the renewal leave that I've just experienced, there were so many working parts to pull together to ensure that it all ran smoothly for us. There were quite literally planes, trains and automobiles that had to be boarded to ensure that we got where we were supposed to be going without any hitches. Now, thankfully, neither Margaret nor I took on Steve Martin or John Candy type characteristics and everything did work smoothly for us. You know, it would have been really easy to build that whole experience as just a, a long vacation. But there was another important aspect to it. The Book of Discipline defines this gift of time that was given to me as one of our United Methodist pastors as one in which I was also to be listening for the voice of the Spirit and taking time to rest and renew, to prepare for whatever the next season of ministry will bring. So all along the way during those weeks, that meant my keeping my own eyes and ears open for God. What might God speak into my life during these weeks? What might I see with my eyes that would help me recognize the gentle work of God's Spirit? What might I hear with my ears if I tuned in a little bit more and listened for God's voice? What might happen if I could adopt a posture of openness to God in these weeks away from you all? Well, that's what I want to share with you about today. Now, when we Christians speak in those kind of terms about what God might speak or what we might see or hear from God, well, we can often have a tendency that we're about to write another chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, that there's going to be this mighty rushing Pentecostal wind or this bright blinding light from the sky with a voice calling like the Apostle Paul or a mind and attitude altering vision given in a dream just like the one that Peter has on the roof of his friend's house, do you remember? Now, as it turned out, there was a bright light in the sky in that the weather was really good for the duration of our trip. And there wasn't anything like a rushing wind. It was just a gentle, cooling breeze. It really was nice. But that's where the comparisons with the Acts of the Apostles stop. Because for me, God just kept showing up in four little words. This is my story. This is my story. That was the simple little phrase that kept coming back to me again and again during the last 
six weeks of renewal leave. Now, I did not leave you all in June feeling like I needed that kind of reminder from God, but perhaps God just knows better what we need than we know ourselves. Amen? In all of the cities that I got to visit, and in my homeland too with my family, everywhere I went, I kept hearing those words again and again ringing in my mind. This is my story. As we made our way around what was probably just a fraction of the Louvre in Paris, I would see all these beautiful and rather ancient pieces of religious artwork from the Middle Ages right up to the 18th and 19th centuries. All of these wonderful pieces were bearing the very same images and depictions that you and I continue to know and recognize to this very day. I was moving from piece to piece, and then I stopped at this one. Now, I don't know what it is called. I didn't even read the blurb about where it had come from and how old it was. I, I couldn't because I was just so mesmerized by it. I must have stood in front of it for about seven or eight minutes, just gazing at the middle arched section. And in each of these individual squares in that section, a scene had been carved out. And as I looked at them to try and make sense of them, I recognized some of them. That's why I stood there so long. I stood there until I had put the whole section together and recognized that it was just a telling of one of the Gospels from beginning to end. At the end, I had put it all together, and that's actually the first time that I smiled and whispered to myself, this is my story. In Amsterdam, we visited a wonderful little museum called Our Lord in the Attic. It captures a time when Catholics were ousted from their large church buildings in Amsterdam and were forced to worship behind the scenes in more private circumstances. In three large merchants' houses in the city, the upper floors of those houses were converted into Roman Catholic chapels and worship spaces. As I walked around that museum, as I took it all in and recognized all those similar images to the Louvre, I was whispering those words again in my head. This is my story. We stopped off in Zurich as well. And when Margaret and I went out for our morning run, we ran past a statue of the 16th century reformer Ulrich Zwingli. Now, you'll not have heard that name, maybe, unless you were a church history student at seminary. He was a critical voice in the Roman Catholic Church who spoke out in support of clergy marriage. He spoke against the idea of a Lenten fast, and he was one of the very first to depart from the traditional Catholic Mass and bring in preaching through the books of the Bible verse by verse. His was a radical voice at that time, calling for radical changes to many of the things that had been experienced and understood as normal by the majority of churchgoers and church leaders. A radical voice indeed, but it was his courage to speak up, up among that of many others too. That is one of the reasons that you and I are sitting in a Protestant worship service today. This is my story. In Rome, at the Vatican, the opulence of that place was striking indeed, but that opulence was also there to tell a story. And then those little religious shops and priests' vestment stores all around the Vatican were also doing the same thing, telling a story. That's where I got this. This is my story. And it is the story of God's great and unconditional love for all people. A love that was made present among human beings, made available to all people in the life and the words and the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is my story. And it is the story of God's saving work in my life and in the lives of countless others throughout time yourselves included, I hope. 
God's saving work carried out so that you and I might know the scandalous and yet wondrous nature of God's grace. That our sins and shortcomings, our flaws and our failings have been forgiven and forgotten by God. That the old has gone and the new is being born again. Our very lives made new through Christ and in the power of the Spirit. Friends, this is my story. And it's the story that does not end at the moment of my own salvation when I accept Christ's gift of new life. No way, friends. It's a story that is new and fresh every single morning. It is the story of the work of God's Spirit in our lives, birthing hope in us as we journey forward, calling us to love and serve those who God loves. Those who God is sending us out among. This is my story. Now, I know, haven't even gotten close to the psalm that we have read yet. But that's okay. We're about to get there now. Why did I land on this particular reading to preach in this particular sermon? Well, that's very simple. I landed here because I believe the call being made to Israel in this psalm is a similar call to the one that God was whispering to me during those last number of weeks. And that is to remember what my story is. The psalmist opens up these verses with a very simple request. Listen, give ear my people to my teaching, he says. Listen, because as I open up my mouth, I'm going to speak to you in parables and stories. I'm going to share with you the stories and the sayings of old, the ones that were given to us, the same ones that you and me are called to pass on to those that are coming after us. And then they will pass on to their children too. This is your story, says the psalmist. And it is the story of God's glorious deeds and the wonders that he has done in and for this people. The psalmist is inviting these folks to remember their story, their defining story of God's amazing rescue of their people. How God led them out of slavery from Egypt. How God walked them through a parted sea, leading them all the way to a land which had been promised and given to them. Israel was being invited to remember God's grace in their lives. And then to tell the story of that grace. So I'm going to stop there for a minute. And I'm going to ask you to think for a second about the story of God's grace in your own life. How God has rescued you. How God has been at work in your life. How God has led you. How God has set you free. You see, friends, that's the whole reason we gather in church week after week. It is to remember God's goodness and it is to tell of the wondrous story of God's amazing grace. That's why we gather for worship. So I'm asking you, what is your story today? What has been your story this past week Does it give you delight to recognize and remember that the story of God's grace and mercy is your story? Does it give you relief to know that your story is the story of how God will never ever leave you or forsake you at any point in your life? If you're having some trouble answering those questions, then I'm going to suggest to you that you and me, we've got a wee bit of work to do. To help you recognize and remember God's presence and work in your life. So that's why we have small groups. That's why we have an open door for all of our pastors. Come and let's talk about it. My friends, this is our story. And we are aware of that only because someone took the time to tell us the story of God's saving love and grace. 
And the scripture that we have read together today in worship is an invitation made to all of us, which invites us to be the ones who will tell our story of God's grace to those around us and to those who are coming after us. And goodness knows that we live in a world full of people that are longing to hear a story of God's tender love and merciful grace. Each day, every single one of us is going to cross paths with those whose lives are so full of regret and shame for one reason or another that they are aching to hear that they are loved for no other reason than that they were fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Each day, you and I, we are meeting people who have been told throughout their lifetimes that they are not good enough, that they cannot be included, that they just don't fit in. These people are pushed aside, used, abused, excluded and rejected. We are meeting them every day at stores, in our neighborhoods, at our gatherings, whether we know it or not. And these same people are longing to hear the story that we have heard for ourselves. You don't need to be enough. You don't have to fit in. Christ gave himself for you just as you are. So come, eat, drink, let God love you and do God's work in you in God's own way. Now maybe as you're listening here today, some of you needed to hear that wee word for yourselves. So let me say it to you again. You don't need to be enough. You don't have to fit in. Christ gave himself for you just as you are. You are loved just as you are. And you are completely welcome here. So come, eat, drink. Let God love you. And do God's work in you in God's way. This is my story. This is your story, church. This is our story. So let's get up from here and start telling it again and again and again. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Each week after our sermon in our digital service, we do our best to give you a couple of questions that will help you reflect on what I've just said and how you have heard it and what impact it might have as you apply this lesson into your lives. Here are this week's questions. Friends, that brings our service to a close today. We want to thank you and celebrate that you joined in these moments. We hope that they were as holy and sacred for you as they have been for us in putting them together. We do want to invite you to join us next week at the same time right here on Facebook or YouTube at 11 a.m. every Sunday morning our digital service goes out. Or if you are in Fernandina Beach and you would like to join us in person, we have three worship services here on campus. We meet at 8 o'clock and 11 a.m. here in the sanctuary. And in between, we have a 9.30 service that meets in Maxwell Hall. We would love to see you there. Please plan to join us. In the meantime, I want to invite you to receive this benediction. Beloved children of God, go in peace today. As those 
who know their story, as those who have received God's story, and as those who are willing to share God's story. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.